Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Werlein, founding pastor at FaithBridge, and this is Postscript. Just an opportunity for us to talk a minute after the sermon with Pastor Dan, who started our new series, The Things That Keep Me Up at Night, with a great word about worry. Thank you for that. Thank you. So we had, uh, we had one question that was texted in that probably represents any number of thoughts that came through um, in people's minds. And then I want to talk about one other thing. Okay. So, so let me read the question. The question says... Good message. I'm struggling with feeling I always will be provided for, and then that others will always be provided for, what you were saying in the passage. Because the passage referencing God providing for the birds and the plants sometimes feels to me not to be always true. I think of animals and plants and people who die from starvation or not being provided for, and it's hard and it's scary to trust among homeless, homelessness, abuse, neglect, even malpractice by doctors that we rely on. Can you please offer your thoughts on this? How do you bring that together with what you were talking about? Yeah, good question and one that many, many people have wrestled with over the years. I think the best response I've come across, I'll give credit to John R. W. Stott, a biblical scholar from the UK. He points out that uh, Jesus' promise of provision in this passage is not co-equal with or the same thing as uh, a promise of protection from all harm. Uh, we live in a sinful, broken world. Bad things happen to good people. But God can be relied upon to provide us not only food and clothing when that is the need, but even in the midst of our suffering, God provides what we need. If, if grace is what we need to get through it, if stamina is what we need, if trust in Him is what we need, uh, as we've seen in martyrs and Christians around the world today even yeah. who are suffering, sure. uh, God comes along and in the moment of need provides uh, so I, I think we do the scripture a disservice if we hone in strictly on the meeting of physical needs. I think Jesus' message is much broader. I'll buy that. I would also add, uh, I'm thinking to any number of mission trips, cross-cultural mission trips that I have taken. Um, you've probably taken five times as many. I'm sure that you've had the experience I've had. You get outside of America and you get into uh, poor and poor cultures, what do you discover? Joy. That's the funny thing. Oh, absolutely. You think we're going to bring the joy of the Lord yeah. to these poor little urchin people and you get over there. They bring it to us. They bring it to us. Yeah. They know a joy that we don't know of. That's true. And I'm afraid uh, maybe that, that any number of us inclined to wrestle with this sort of question do get a little bit jaded by our American worldview, yeah. uh, and which tends to always compare up with people who have it better than compare down. And you see, my gosh, these people know and love God more and better than, than <laughs> yes. we do. I've had that thought far too many times. Exactly. Yeah. Well, all right. So. One of the reasons that I wanted to sit in the host chair uh, on this talk about anxiety and worry that you did a great job on is because you mentioned me. Okay. And particularly, <laughs> not so much our friendship, but you mentioned the medication. Yeah. And which is indeed nothing that you and I have ever uh, denied. Why don't you talk about it and then I'll chime in sure. as well. Yeah. So in the years leading up to our transition to Faith Bridge 17 years ago and immediately following, that would have been from about 2000 to 2004, thereabouts, uh, I began to deal with stress and anxiety uh, expressed through depression. Mm. 
Mm. I, I was sinking into places I had never been before. Mm, I remember. And really didn't know what was going on, what to do about it. And I'll give credit to my wife. She's the one who pointed out, you know, y you need to see somebody. This, this is bigger than, than you. And so I did get in to see someone and had some excellent counseling. And eventually we decided that, that medication was necessary. And I went on Wellbutrin, mm -hmm. which I have been on since. Mm -hmm. And it has made all the difference in the world for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't foresee me ever going off. I hope they never stop making it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, because well. my brain just doesn't produce what Wellbutrin provides. Right, right, exactly. Well, similarly, in 2004, when Suzanne was pregnant with Wesley, I was raising the money to, to build our first phase, I began having panic attacks. Mm. Like dropping off the ledge. Yeah, one time we were in a car and I was driving. I started crying and you're like, why don't you pull over? <laughs> and I really was coming unglued. Yeah. And similarly, uh, my doctor said, I think we need to try what's called an SSRI medication mm -hmm. for you. And uh, that's like Lexapro, Zoloft, Prozac, those. And within a month, I wasn't terrified, I wasn't afraid I was dying, and in those loops, every 30 seconds that I just couldn't break out of, I'm dying, I die, I'm dying, it just kept coming back. And so I always tell people, without reservation, I look upon medication that Dr. Solomon gives me mm -hmm. for my heart, right. is a gift from God, and I look upon my medication that the doctor gives me for my brain as a gift from God as well. I don't know why we uh, tend to think somehow that that's a lesser thing. That, well, you, sh you, you can treat this organ and you can treat that organ yeah. and you can treat that, but you, you never want to treat the brain. But I think we do. Yeah. And I remember my counselor, uh, I, I was talking about the stigma, especially as a pastor. Yeah, here. right. And at the time, I wore glasses all the time. Mm -hmm. Hadn't had my eyes fixed yet. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Dan, what's that on your nose? These? He said, yes. He said, are you ashamed to have those out there for the whole world to see? I said, no. And he said, well, why do you wear them? Because my eyes don't work. Exactly. Mm, that's good. And there's a part of your brain that doesn't work. Yeah. So you shouldn't feel bad yeah. about it. It's yeah. just... Yeah. Which I might also add one other thought, then we're done. Um, and that is, when we take this type of medication, it is a help it doesn't fix, Right. we still wrestle with worry, sure. but the way I describe it to people is it just feels like for once the playing field has been leveled. Yes. And now at least I take it on uh, with the potential strength and everything that other brothers and sisters are taking it on yeah. with, where if I'm not on it, I, I really do. Behind I, the eight ball, I'm way yeah. behind and no matter how much I pray I can get in these uh, little weird loops. And so I'm very grateful. Amen. Great word today. Thanks. Great kickoff for the series. I'm excited to continue it uh, next Sunday as we continue to talk about the things that keep us up at night. And so we'll see you then next Sunday. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.